Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Panther Podcast. My name is Justin. My name is Anastasia. And today we have a special guest. We have two. Veteran yeah, we have students. two guests. Um, so, welcome yes. guests. Woo! Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you, guys. Tell us a little bit more about yourselves. Well, I'm Jake. I am the vice president of the Veterans Club. I am, uh, I guess I'm a senior, uh, long story, but uh, I'm an applied human physiology <coughs> major over at Crean uh, with a leadership minor. My name is Devansh. Um, I'm uh, another one of the executive members or part of the committee for Veterans Club here on campus. I am a, I guess, technically a sophomore, second year, um, oh, nice. a poli-sci major, a political science, and yeah, first semester here. So just I uh, transferred from a community college. Uh, oh, same, same we're, for me. We're actually both transfer students. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah, all, all four of us. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Welcome to Transfer Guide Part <laughs> 3. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what was it like, um, just like your experience in, um, in the military? Well, we were both in the Navy, first and foremost. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was in from, I joined uh, 2012, was in until 2017. <coughs> uh, got out, went to Saddleback Community College in Mission Viejo. From there, two years, transferred to Columbia University in New York. COVID hits, I don't want to be in New York City, I come back here, be with friends, family. Uh, and then as I stayed here, the longer I was here, the harder it was to leave. So my girlfriend, uh, she got her master's degree from Chapman in creative writing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That was kind of how I got plugged into Chapman. Uh, that and uh, I knew an old, or I had an old roommate that went to Chapman, <coughs> which is how I met my girlfriend. Uh, but I walked to the campus once and one of the big problems that I had with, uh, with being in New York and at Columbia is it's, massive mm. so many people all the time mm -hmm. and uh, I I realized at community college I really like that smaller more intimate classroom where it's like 20 to 30 people you feel like you can walk up to the professor and just ask them a question that was the reason why I made the transition to Chapman as opposed to like a UC or a CSU or UCLA or USC, any of those. But you were like looking for a smaller community. I was. Like a small town right. feeling. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, yeah somewhere mm -hmm. where I could that like. Small. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, you're right, yeah. yeah Something right. that I could like connect a little bit better because when I was in New York, even though I had all of those people around, I never really like immersed myself. I was a little afraid to step out and get in, like get involved because there was a veterans club there that had over a hundred members. You just felt like, you, you felt like small fish, big pond, no mm -hmm. matter what. Mm -hmm. That's what New York is. Right. How you many know? members do you have here? We have a, an executive committee of eight. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We're brand new, like brand new. Yeah. We did, uh, we took, just to get in a little bit of the history about the Veterans Club, it did exist prior to COVID, but as many things, COVID nuked it. Uh, you know, you had personnel shift over from the students who were here to the faculty at the Veterans Resource Center. Or, uh, we've, we've got a new director um, who is replacing another director who was replacing somebody. <laughs> so it's just like a lot of things shifted around and nobody kind of picked things back up to get it going, at least the, from the club side of things. Over the summer, um, I was involved in a program for another veteran who's doing PhD research actually on at Chapman uh, on veterans resource centers and what they mean and sort of what community means and how to integrate peace practices into veterans transitioning and how it can help sort of navigate that confusing environment for, you know, an adult, like, a, like an adult with a real life work experience yeah, absolutely. back into school where we're dealing more so with, you know, the traditional st uh, style students, somebody who's coming right out of high school. Let's see, I was here first on campus back in January for the, the transfer tour, or like the potential prospective student tour before I was even accepted. So I had my tour here and I, and I loved it. Um, I already had a feeling I would wanna go here before I even did the campus tour because it's 10, 15 minutes from my home here in Anaheim. Um, so I've always heard of Chapman University. Again, like he was just saying, like a small town feel. I love that. I'm a very small unit, small teams kind of guy. I like getting to know people that I'm around and I don't wanna feel like you were saying about Columbia University, like I wouldn't have thrived there, you know, cause it's very overwhelming, especially as, as a veteran coming in from, you know, I just finished active duty last, last month and, or sorry, not last month, but in September, I just finished active duty. So 
I'm still fresh in my transition from active duty to veteran status slash full-time student. So I haven't been a full-time student since I was in high school in 2016. You know, so this is all very like, not new, but I'm, I'm reacclimating myself, right? Um, so again, this, the small classroom feeling, small campus feeling, it was very cool to me. You keep saying you're like fresh in this transition. Mm -hmm. What is the hardest for you so far? Oof, uh, I would say one of the hardest things off the top of my head is probably finding that community and mm -hmm. trying to feel that um, involvement <clears throat> or like that sense of belonging. Because, you know, when you go to new places, um, like for example, when I, when I first joined the Navy and I first reported, you know, to my ship, Seaman, you know, Seaman Meta 2017, you know, first reported the ship, like, I don't know anybody there, you know? And I, I, immediately I'm, I'm trying to look for that sense of community, that sense of belonging. And kind of same thing going on right now. Like, I didn't know one single person coming in here. Um, so trying to find, you know, I found, found this veterans club, you know, thankfully. So pretty involved here. Um, trying to join other clubs and other communities and just trying to be involved. I would say that's like my hardest thing so far. I, I'm, I'm just more interested in like <coughs> the, what you guys did in the Navy. Cause yeah. like as a South Korean, I also have to serve someday mm. um, in the military. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. Right. So yeah. um, uh, ma minimum two years, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's two years. Yeah. It, it, I think it used to be three years when my dad. Did uh, the guys from BTS just get called yeah, out? Yeah. Nah, so that was are. like a big deal. <laughs> my girlfriend yeah. freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are serving right now. Yeah. Um, I'm just really curious. Do you, have you guys had any like cool moments in the military that you want to share like an experience? and why that probably helped you now. <laughs> He's like, out of how many, <laughs> how many experiences? Ugh, man. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what I did, I didn't take the traditional Navy path. <laughs> I actually never went on a ship at all. I was, uh, my job was something called a hospital corpsman. And because the Marines don't have their own medics, what they do is they take Navy corpsmen. And the Navy corpsman can be in many different areas in, in healthcare. You can be an orthopedic tech where you're putting on casts. Uh, you can be a PT tech where you're helping people rehabilitate. You can be a mental health tech, behavioral health tech, uh, dental tech, respiratory tech, cardiovascular tech. All, every tech that you can imagine, you can be in, the, in, in as a corpsman. Uh, so in that sense, it's 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 really awesome. It, it's not like the army where those are all individual jobs. Then the navy it all falls under one. So what I did was I was uh, I, I went the Marine Corps route and I went through a, a program called Field Medical Training Battalion, which is where you basically go through eight weeks of a corpsman oriented style of Marine Corps boot camp, where they teach you how to wear their uniforms properly. They teach you how their culture works versus the Navy, how their ranking structure works versus the Navy, uh, and how, like, what your responsibilities are gonna be. And when I was in course school, learning my primary job in a Navy setting, I was learning more things, how to give, you know, shots, how to give an IV, how to, uh, how to patch up, a, you know, a, like, a, like a bed sore, clean a patient, do those like more clinical nursing style practices that you would see in a controlled environment. Almost like medical school. Almost like medical <laughs> school. And the Marine Corps is anything but a controlled environment. Wow. It is not the same. You are out in the desert most of the time. You're wearing flak, you're wearing Kevlar, you're carrying a huge pack and your medical pack. And a lot of the training there is is engineered toward combat. <laughs> it happens. The, I know a guy who he walked in the room and he saw the guy just sort of <laughs> just found out that day he wasn't ready for that job <laughs> i feel like it's a huge difference between doing that doing being a corpsman being a uh, an hm or a hospital corpsman in uh like in a hospital setting or a clinic setting mm -hmm. versus like a battlefield setting yeah it's like it, you're two different it's two different universes it's wild yeah. just it's every day great. like you're either you're either in the marines or you're in the navy yeah. and it is a stark stark difference yeah i, I can't imagine i loved it <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it was, it was sure. fun. I, I, I still carry my own med pack. Like I make up my own first aid kit and I just leave it in my bag all the time. So myself, uh, my, so I was in the Navy for six and a half years. My, my first three, uh, it was split up. So my first three was on a ship, 
I was on the USS Michael Murphy out of uh, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Um, it was a destroyer, or sorry, not was, it is a destroyer. It's still, it's still <laughs> a commission ship. Uh, but yeah, the USS Michael Murphy, I was there for three years and my rate or my job. So in the Navy, we refer to our jobs as rates or my rating. So my rate or rating was a BM, a bosun's mate. So if you think about like the typical, like the typical sailor on a ship outside painting, driving the boat, kind of driving the ship, doing that kind of outdoorsy stuff. That, that was me, that was, that was my job. And as far as like, uh, I guess you were saying like experiences or moments that uh, were really memorable. So in like 2019, kind of towards the tail end of my last deployment, we were down in uh, South America and uh, we were uh, heading up back up north towards San Diego. So we're off the coast of like Chile, Ecuador. One morning, you know, uh, we're doing our, I don't know, you, you're aware of it, but the, the crossing the line ceremony, mm. when, when you become a, a shellback, when a, what is it, a scallywag or whatever it's called? Something like that. Po a poly, polywog. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a polywog before you cross the equator, right? And then once you cross, cross the equator, while we're crossing the equator, there's a crossing the line ceremony, which don't want to get too much into the details of that, but it's a ceremony, ceremony, and you become a shellback after that. It's so, a hazing experience. It's a, what it's a hazing experience. <laughs> you get hazed. Right, right. Um, but <laughs> anything can happen. So, anyways, uh, I mean, the, the experience wasn't that wasn't the, the the crossing line ceremony. It was what was going on during that. So, uh, during that ceremony, I was I was taking over uh, standing watch up in the pilot house. So the pilot house is at the top of the ship, uh, almost towards the top of the ship where. Uh, the ship is being um, pretty much navigated through there. So I'm over there standing watch, standing lookout. I'm like the watch watch captain for my watch team at the time, the bosun's made of the watch. And some of my lookouts spot out a, um, a few people stranded out to sea waving their, you know, their, their orange pants or whatever it is. And we end up, long story short, that day we end up rescuing them. They've been stranded out to sea for like eight days, five days without water. Wow. And three days without like food or something, so it was like five. It was like five people, a 14 year old, and whoever else, whoever else was there. Um, but yeah, it was some crazy stuff. You know, we had to bring them on board. We towed their boat. We transferred control of them to the Ecuadorian Coast Guard, and you know, it was just, it was a lot going on that day. You know, and less than 24 hours later, the next morning after that, our captain comes over the one MC, which is like our loud PA announcement system on the ship. And he says, hey, our helicopter spotted out a drug boat. And this is like the next morning at 8 a.m. We've had a long day. We, we've had a long day, but the day before, carrying those, the, those rescuers, right? Or trying to rescue those people, those fishermen. And the next morning, our captain's like, hey, we have a drug boat. Man the boat deck, do this, do that. We're like, holy sh... Holy <laughs> crap, right? Yeah. We're like, holy yeah. crap. Like, like, you know... I don't like a policeman. It just... I mean, you saw it. Like a policeman. Uh, you, can, you can be called off anytime. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, much. I mean, you're, you're always on call, right? Like when you're on deployment in the middle of the ocean, anything can all, happen all the time, right? Like you just have to be, you have to be ready to respond. So like, I, I would say kind of just summing it up, like we ended up, you know, working with our U.S. Coast Guard uh, to take those drugs from the ship or from the small boat. It was a cartel boat, et cetera, et cetera. So it was those, those 48 hours were probably some of the craziest 48 hours I've ever had in the Navy was it's cause like I barely slept and I was, my adrenaline rush was just like crazy for two days. Two days. Wow. So, I miss out on college though. You said like what? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like college. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In a I mean, degree, in a degree. So, to, 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 yeah. to an extent. To, yeah. to an extent. Yeah. Yeah, not right. too extreme, of course, yeah. but yeah. still. I'm but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like um, it's those experiences, you know, like, the ones that you've had, the ones that I've had that like, I don't know, it's important to just remember those because that's, that's, that was, that was our, that was our career. You know, that's what we did. It shapes us, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's those tough situations in the military or not even just scratch the military. It's those tough situations in life that shape you as a person, you know, uh, it's like pressure. Well, what is it saying? Pressure creates diamonds or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, it's, you know, it can be applied to us. Mm -hmm you know, students, veterans, whoever it is. It's so. one of the things that the military does well, yep. is they make it so shitty that you only have the, you, you, the your only choice is to learn how to adapt yep. and overcome yep. whatever is put in front of you. But that's probably what helps you transition into the environment and university, right? Yeah, um, 
A lot of it is just one, you know, when you join the military, you do go and become part of this bigger fraternity, but- Literally fraternity. It, it, that's yeah. really what it yeah. is. <laughs> like when I first got to Chapman, I was asked to rush. I was like, why? I am part of the biggest fraternity that I, <laughs> that I can think of. It's the veteran fraternity. Right, right. Yeah. Sure. But the, uh, when you first get to boot camp, I, I, like, I felt super alone. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh yeah. I'm in this on my own. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And your, your mom's not there to hold your hand for you. Yeah. You're, you're there. You realize the, like, the weight of the decision you made when you, yeah. you've you literally just like left everybody behind. Yep. But that's something like, like you can understand. You're, you're here you're from, from South Korea. Korea. Like, like you're, you're from, from Russia. Russia. Yeah, wow. you guys yeah, are here okay. doing the same exact thing, yep. just in a different capacity. I mean, it's... Like that's an experience and that's a decision that you'll grow to no matter what you're gonna you're gonna thank yourself mm -hmm. because, because it was so, it was so ballsy, ballsy to do just putting yourself in that situation like taking that initiative to do that is just so important for people to do mm -hmm. honestly we have a lot of information about like veterans connecting with each other but how do you think non-veteran students can support you and help you with this transition and how how can you like connect with them and all that sort of thing uh, that's a great question. Um, so just to rephrase, you're saying how can non-veteran students um, for the UN support connect, connect with, with us? us? I think the best thing that non-student veterans, or sorry, non-veteran students can do for us, I don't think we're asking for a whole lot, really. It's, I think just like a sense of, help, helping create that sense of belonging. You yeah, know, know what I mean? Because kind of what I was talking about earlier as far as like one of the things I was I was slash am struggling with as far as my transition from active duty to being a student slash civilian, right? Um, is finding that sense of belonging and I guess that purpose. Uh, but I think what student veter non-student veterans can do for us is create that welcoming atmosphere for us and, you know, jo join our club. You know, you don't have to, it's Veterans Club, you know, of Chapman University, but you don't have to be a veteran. I mean, we're, to, to be part of the club, like we have dependents. Uh, you know, your, your mom or dad were in the military and their kids, you know, are, are, are part of the club or the Veterans Resource Center. Even if you have no affiliation with the military whatsoever, you know, come, come join the club and hang out with us, you know, because I feel like we have something important to offer to, uh, to non-student veterans. And we were kind of talking about it earlier in our, in our meeting today. We were kind of saying like how, as far as what we have to offer for those non-student veterans, non-veteran <laughs> students, I keep messing that up. Non-veteran students is um, that sense of like mentorship that we could offer for them, you know what I mean? We, we obviously have unique experiences, kind of, you probably got a taste of that from some of the things we talked about today. High pressure, high risk, high whatever, stress environments, situations, experiences make unique people, you know? And we have some maybe insight or advice or some sort of maybe just just general friendship that we can offer to non-veteran students. I got it right this time, non-veteran students. <laughs> right. So I think, you know, just like I said, just kind of making it simple. I know I kind of made it a long answer, but join our club, you know, get involved with us. Um, Cause we're looking f to be involved with, with you guys, right? And yeah, in invite people for podcasts. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, right, you know? Right. To build on that, um, you know, it's weird <clears throat> being 35 mm -hmm. and my lab partner's 20. You know, but at the same time, I'm in an interesting position because I have a 20 year old sister and she goes to UC Davis. So I've always kind of had this like this relationship in my life that's been really important, but it spans a really large age gap. So I've always kind of had to like keep in touch a little bit with how to interact with a younger crowd rather than just being one of those guys who like gets set in his ways. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that that benefits me, but at the same time, when I walk around Chapman, sometimes it just feels like I might seem unapproachable mm. because I'm older, yeah. or maybe, I mean, maybe I just look a certain way, but, and I think that might be true for veterans in general, like the obvious veterans, the obvious veterans that are walking around with a black rifle coffee oh. shirt, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> And you know, USMC license plate cover. Yeah. But <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, what do we do in the VRC? 
we just hang out sometimes just, and just yeah. talk. We literally it's, talk. It's, it's just funny Have conversations. Have some free food, some free coffee, and yeah. hang out and vibe out, man, honestly. And what are people doing in a fraternity or a sorority? They're hanging out and they're yeah. talking. What are you doing when you're going to a social event? You're hanging out and you're talking. What are they doing in the Starbucks every morning? They're hanging out and they're talking. Like, that's what we want, too. Yeah. Cause we are, we don't want to. We're not gonna yell at you, right? Like yeah, if you come up and say hi, we're not gonna be like, "Who are you?" Put you at attention. <laughs> How many years did you serve, young man? You know? right. <laughs> like, that's just not yeah. what we're gonna do. You know, we want to get along with everybody, just the same. Exactly. How to keep that open communication with like um, administration team, and like how does that work between the federal experience of the veterans and the administration and current things? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, that's a great question because it's a lot of things that are like real high priorities for our club because um, as much as 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 great as a school at Chapman is and it is I, I really believe that I've had nothing but a positive experience at Chapman the problem right now is that the veterans resources when compared to other schools it just doesn't stack up <clears throat> the funding that's allocated to the Veterans Resource Center is supposed to cover a lot of things. It's supposed to cover counseling, both financial and mental health. It's supposed to cover a certain amount of, a certain number of staff to the number of veterans or people. There's two types of people going to school that fall under the umbrella of military connected. And as Devonch pointed out, one of those is veterans and the others are dependents. Now those dependents, their parents served 20 years and they earned that GI Bill or that access to VA education resources that pay for your college. There's about 200, a little bit more than 200 people that are military connected attending Chapman. There's so that's not that much. That's not that much, yeah. I have like 250 international students as well. It's like, it's so very small for me. It is, it's, and it's hard to tie it together when it doesn't already exist. So, like, cause, I mean, even more so with you guys, cause everybody speaks different languages. At least we all speak the same language, which is bullshit. <laughs> and so it's like, we're able to connect a little bit easier, yeah. I would say, than what you guys would have to do. But uh, in terms of the resources that are allocated, we have one building. We have, okay, we have two spaces. One of them is a temporary conference room over in the Entrepreneurship Center that we just got this semester so we could hold our meetings. And the reason why we have to hold our meetings there is because the actual VRC, the Veterans Resource Center building, which is at 526 Schaefer, it is 231 square feet. There is one room. It is supposed to manage, in case our director, his name's Steven Leader, he's an army, uh, he's a former army officer. He is supposed to meet with every student that comes to Chapman that needs to discuss benefits and how that's going to work. And all that one room. All in that one room. And if that's where all of our work studies are supposed to be, that's where all of the veterans resource materials are held. Uh, it's where any mental health counseling now granted like is supposed to take place now granted there is mental health counseling Unfortunately, they are not equipped to meet the tremendous needs of a veteran population That's a wildly different segment of the population when you're talking about mental health You're talking about people who have maybe been to war who have seen people die maybe their friends maybe they've killed people in war that's not the kind of, that's not the same as like, and it's not to diminish anybody's issues, but it's not the same as what, like, like I miss my family. Those resources, they're just not at Chapman. As far as academic advising, when I was at Saddleback Community College right down the road, they had their own counselors that could help, hey, this is the class that you need to take because it's in your degree plan and the VA won't pay for it unless it's in your degree plan. Or disability compensation. Every veteran that's a part of the I'm pretty sure every one of us yeah. has some measure of disability rating. Oh yeah, uh, and so that like that's a hard that's a hard maze to walk through, as I'm sure you can imagine. Steve, the one guy that works at the VRC, he's supposed to manage all of that for 200 students and take care of the certification every semester for their classes. So the problem there is that there's just one guy trying to manage everything for everyone. And how does the administration like answers to that problem? Do they do anything or? 
Do you have any meetings with them? We've had one meeting. We've had one meeting with a vice president of, of uh, enrollment. Um, it went well. He's a very nice guy. Uh, we, we, we sort of presented our issues to him. We wanted to talk to him about sort of like the problems facing the veteran community. Like the priority number one is we need a space. We need a bigger space. We need a space that veterans can come and create that sense of community. Yep. But also right now, if say, you know, we're work studies, we technically, we, we technically work, not necessarily for the school, but for the VRC, we get paid through the VA, uh, like through a work study program. But if we're working and we're usually doing club work, you know, trying to develop everything that we've got going on, if somebody comes into the office and goes, hey, Steve, I have a question about benefits, we have to leave because that's private. It's a private conversation between Steve and that and that student. Thank you for sharing like your concerns and everything. It's just yeah, like yeah. good to you know spread some awareness and yeah. Uh, it's, for it's, nice, it's nice to be here so we can kind of kind of show the Chapman community like hey like we're normal people, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and then two two you know is to like also like get our message across and like you know like spread the word about Veterans Club and like the the help that the club and and the VRC needs you know. Um, all across the spectrum, so yeah, yeah. it was nice for you guys to have us That's here. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's also going to be an article in our newspaper. Or, um, I think Nick, one of our feature writers, mm -hmm. is about to go. Yes. 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 He spoke with our Nick earlier, actually. We have a Nick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's great. Well, yeah. going to have uh, an article of the newspaper, so you all should check it out as well. And this podcast, and of course. And podcast, it's yeah. all about veterans, especially if you're interested in that aspect mm -hmm. of uh, college life. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having us again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for having us. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it yeah. today. Um, we're happy to have you all. Happy to have you too. <laughs> and yeah, see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Awesome.